Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to see the concept of overloading and action method. So let us continue. So before uh, switching to overloading and action method, let us see in brief what is method overloading. I hope all of you are already familiar with this. So what is method overloading? Method overloading means it allows your class to define more than one method having the same name but the number of arguments and the type of arguments should be different. Okay. So, we will first of all define the problem with overloading and action method and then after we will see the solution of the same. So, what is the problem with overloading and action method? See, you cannot overload an action method. This is one of the restriction of an of our action method and we already saw this part in action method video right now the reason see why we can't overload an action method basically we write an action method in a controller and controller is a class okay so it should allow me to overload an action method but it do but it does not allow it why why it is like this because controller is not a normal class it is basically dealing with your HTTP protocol and your HTTP protocol doesn't understand overloading. That's why we cannot overload an action method. Now let us see how to tackle with this situation. See, you can overload the action method but you have to follow some rules for that. So let us see what is the solution to this. So there are various ways to overload an action method. Let us see it one by one. The first method to overload an action method is use different verb. So whenever you create an overload of an action method, so the one method should be a get request and another method should be a post request. Then definitely you can overload an action method. We are going to see this part practically. Okay. Now the another way is to use non-action attribute. See. When you mark any method as non-action, definitely it, no longer, it is no longer treated as an action method. It is just treated as a normal method. So in that case, you can overload an action method. Now third way, if your multiple overloads of an action methods are all the get request, in that case, you can differentiate it by using action name attribute. And I explain all these attributes that is, action verb, non-action and action name in my action selector video. If you are not familiar with this, my suggestion is to please watch that action selectors video and this point get clear. Now let us, let us switch to code window to overload an action method using different HTTP verb. I think non-action and action name uh, can be uh, can be solved by you. So I'm just going to explain you how to use HTTP, different HTTP verb to overload an action method. So let us switch to code window. See, I have already created an app application. I created one account controller and in account controller, I created one register method and this register method is returning a view. So I didn't define view result as a return type, but you can define it. So time being, I am keeping it action result because this will work because action result is a base class of view result. Okay. So I have already created a view. So let us check this, check the view. See so in view, I created one registration form, which is accepting name, address, phone, email, password and confirm password from user. One submit button is also there. Otherwise, the request will be not sent to the server. Okay. I created a form tag. I defined the post uh, post value for the method. Uh, I kept action attribute purposely blank. We'll feel it later. Okay. So, in form tag, we are accepting the various values from user. Now, let us write one action method which will accept all these value in our register form that is name, password, email, etc, etc. Okay. So here, let me create one method and that method is going to 
return a content. So that's why I'm keeping a return type content register. And here I'm purposely naming my method as register. Now this register method will accept that argument. Okay. Now according to the concept of model binding, primitive model binding. I'm going to accept this value as the argument of this register method. Now, according to the concept of model binding, I have to keep the tag name, okay? That is name, address, phone, and my argument name same. So let us define it: string name, comma string, address, string phone. So let me collapse this string email, then string pass, and then string confirm pass. Okay. Actually, we are not going to do anything with this value, but just to understand it betterly, I have defined everything. So what I am going to return, if my password and confirm password matches, I will display the message that registered successfully. Otherwise, the registration failed. So let's check it. So pass equal to equal to confirm pass. If it matches, I will return a content as registered. registered successfully right otherwise we are showing the message that registration failed okay this is just to understand the concept of action method overloading i am not including any other complexity here like database handling etc so our main focus is to overload an action method right So here we are showing the message registration failed, right? Okay, quite simple. Now, what we did, we create two overload of our register method. Now, whenever we give call to our account controller's register method from address bar, this method should execute, right? From address bar, whenever I call my account controller's register method this method should execute and whenever i click on this submit button okay this overload should execute right now let us complete one part here i have to specify the action that i want to execute right so which action i want to execute i want to execute account controller's register method right now let us try to execute it so first of all, we'll give call to the account controller's register method and we expect that this method should execute, right? So while compiling it, do not show any error message. It works fine. Right. Okay. Now account slash register. So we are expecting that we should, dis we should uh, display it should display as a view okay but it is showing an error why if you read it carefully there is ambiguity okay in the register method why because there is there are two register method first one is not accepting anything any argument and the another one is accepting this four to five arguments right and why it fails Okay, hmm. since we didn't define any HTTP verb to our action method, both the action methods are treated as get request. And whenever we call our method from address bar, hmm, we are giving call to our get request and our HTTP protocol get confused which method to be called. Okay, so here we have to specify which method to be called as a get request and which method to be called as a post request. So whenever we specify account slash register in our address bar, 
this method should be should be get executed and whenever i click on this submit method, uh, submit button this method should be executed okay so i want this method to be executed as a post request so i mark it as post method using http post attribute okay i need not to define http get attribute here because by default my method is what a get request okay so you can specify it or you can avoid it no matter so let us execute it so let me specify account slash register okay i hit enter key now view get displayed right that is working fine so our first method which is not accepting any argument is now we get executed and it renders a view for us so let me enter something say priya address say pune phone is 1212121 okay email is priya@gmail.com i enter password as 123 and confirm password as also 123 so i expect a result that should display me registered successfully because according to our code if password and confirm password message matches it will show you the successful message okay so we got this message now let us go back now i'll define the different password now check so it is showing registration failed okay so whenever you want to overload an action method okay you have to keep one method as get request and the overload of it as a post request okay and this is most frequently uh, used practice in mvc and don't forget we are going to follow this in a upcoming section i hope you enjoy this and i will recommend you to practice it yourself then it will be clear to you okay thank you